Hello again, gang. Welcome back to the olden days with me, Jay Wower. It's near the end of Season 8. We've got one game left to go, and there is a miracle could happen where we could end up in the playoffs. We'll see. Let's get into it. So here we go then, gang. We are back. The league table, we are on 67 points. QPR on 67 points. Huddersfield and Nottingham Forest on 68. Hull on 70. Hull's goal difference is five better than ours. Um, if Preston if Preston beat Nottingham Forest, if Plymouth beat Huddersfield, if Norwich beat Hull, and West Brom beat QPR, and we then win against Swansea with a better than five goal swing against Hull, we'll be in the playoffs. So yeah. <laughs> it's not gonna happen, is it, gang? So today's episode is that game, and we will be then moving on through to the end of season review. We'll see the budgets. Speaking of budgets. The finances were down at half a million pounds. What's happened over here? I hear you ask. Bang. Youth facilities. Why does it say you improve youth facilities twice? It's improved youth recruitment. Oh, whatever. Anyway, do you remember last episode where I made all those requests? They didn't even negotiate with me. They just went, yeah, all right. And it cost about two million a pop. So, yeah. But hey, we've got a, a transfer debt. Still 7.3 million in the transfer debt. So we're 7.3 million still to come into the club. We're improving all the other things that are going to help us just kick on to that next level. This is really important to do in the championship because getting a couple more young players that are really good, let them progress a bit more. Absolutely. In terms of the schedule, after the FA Cup quarterfinal defeat to Wolves, we came back against Millwall and Oakley Cannoneer. Scrambled it home in the 92nd minute. Fantastic scenes. Unfortunately, we then lost 3-1 to West Ham. Rafferty Pedder against his former club, and we got a few bookings. We got a fine. But then, bouncing back against Sheffield United, a 2-1 win. Ashley Lloyd and Alan Davis with the goals. Before 2-1 defeat to Blackburn. Jung Sang Bin, 92nd minute. We've just had a 92nd minute winner. Well, we just lost in the 92nd minute. It hurt. It is what it is. Before we went 1-0 down against Cardiff with a goal from Liam Delap. Cardiff, bottom of the table at this point, and it was like, oh, they were going to get out of the relegation zone with this win. Well, Leighton Stewart put pay to that. Two goals for him, 2-1. And then Alex Lowry from the spot, and Leighton Stewart again in a 2-0 win against Plymouth. Before 2-1 win against Watford, Everton, Calabina putting them ahead, 1-0. And then Santos, and then Leighton Stewart again in the second half. Leighton Stewart is just god tier for this division. The fans love him. I love him. He's our top scorer. He is the boy. And then Luton secured the league title here. Sam Surridge with a hat-trick. Alan Davis popped up with a goal. We didn't play terribly, to be fair. Um, you know, if you look at the look at the statistics down here, four shots on target, 1.68 XG, seven shots for Luton, 2.07. I mean, they're, they're the league champions for a reason. They're fantastic, right? Sam Surridge is top goal scorer for the division. 34 goals. Next is 22 for Connolly and Ferguson, who are jockeying for second and third. Anyway, Luton have won the league with that victory against us. Had we had an easier game and got another point or something, then goal difference would have been the swing. We, if we, we'd have won again our last game, we'd be on 70 points with Hull. So I think the playoffs is too ambitious this season. Considering last season we got 57 points, with a game to spare, we're on 67 points. We are in with a miracle... A, mirac a miraculous turn of events would get us in the playoffs, but with one game to go, to have that miraculous turn of events still viable... Here we are then against Swansea. We're playing Swansea, who are 22nd. Let's have a look at the relegation places then. Millwall are down. Cardiff on 41 points. Swansea and Sunderland on 44. Stoke and Bristol City could get sucked into it should they lose their game. So, if we beat Swansea, we could help Sunderland avoid the drop, which would be huge considering we were Sunderland on the last FM. So it'd be very, very nice to do so. And I will be pushing... Or the win. The strongest team is out there, in my opinion. Unfortunately, Yoan Roberts is not featured as much as I'd like him to have done this season. And his value's diminished. Maybe I need to send him out on loan next season. But that's a conversation for in a little bit. McGlone, since he came in, he's not set the world on fire. A 6.56 overall. He's settling in. This is the team. This has been my favourite team all season. Let's just think about the previous games against Swansea. A 3-3 in the Cup that was an FA Cup replay, and then an 8-4 after extra time. 
So hopefully, plenty of goals for your gang. Cue the nil-nil. Of course, we've not really got a lot to play for. Like I said, miraculous turn of events. It's not really going to happen. But we're going to keep an eye on the relegation places. I'm very interested to see what happens there. Atkinson gives it away to Forrester. Oh my god. Uh, do you know what? There's going to be a berating straight out the gate. You mean at that? I actually want Sunderland to avoid relegation. Berate. They liked that. Although At Atkins ah, Atkinson did like it. Cut Sunderland are losing as well. Sunderland in the relegation zone. Oh, Arthur Diallo's come back into it. Right, demand more. Half an hour in, nothing really happened. Corner comes in and... Oh, he's cleared away. Sunderland are winning. And they're back out the drop zone. Go on, Sunderland. What was that? Get your acts together and start playing football. Leighton Stewart is on a yellow card and on a 6.3. Ryan Cassidy, come and save the day, my son. Rob Atkinson, get off. Ian Fitzgerald, on you come. And I'm going to bring Rafferty Pedder on for Antonio Nunes. Daniel Kelly's coming off for Keith McGloan. Four changes at half time. And we're going to st step straight into the second half with an encouragement. Come on, guys. Hull are losing. Hull are, Hull are losing and still in the playoffs. If we, if we won, if we, won, if we were 6 1 up now, we'd be in the playoffs. What a dismal game. Not even any highlights to speak of. Here we go. Kingdon, Davis, Ashley Lloyd. Finds. You cut myself off then. Ashley Lloyd again. Davis. Kingdon. He's looked for Cassidy. What's going on today? We've been shambles. Yeah, that's our best highlight. I've not got any highlights out of this game. There's been like four. That's our most threatening highlight. Nearly a goal for them. Oh, thought you'd give a penalty. Van Ball. Indirect free kick. Boros now. To Santos. Fitzgerald. Bring it back. Yes. Yeah, Kingdon. Go on. Here's your pass. Ashley Lloyd. McGlone. I can't even be bothered to commentate. That's how bad we've been. Oxford. Ramazani. We're going we're gonna to lose to a relegated team. They're literally going down. Despite the win. I suppose we haven't really got a lot to play for. And sometimes the psychology... I feel like the psychology does come through in Football Manager. They, they, they've got to win to stay up. They, you know, they, they're after it. Whereas, realistically... Our players are just going to be about 10th. They've all switched off. Do you know what I'm going to do, though? Keith McGlone's been crap. Harrison Burrows has not been very good. I'm going to bring Oakley Cannon here on. All right, so we've changed the system. W wing backs now on attack. We've got uh, Oakley Cannon here's come on as well, and we've moved Alan Davis to the advanced playmaker in the number 10 role. And here comes Swansea. That's it. That's it, McGlone. You've come on the pitch for a reason. Go on, do a Michael Owen. Wayward. Absolutely wayward. Arroyo. Friend. Back to Oxford. Rafferty Pedder in there brilliantly. Find a pass. Find a pass. Oh, for God's sake. The energy's down today, gang, isn't it? There's no energy in this game. For me as well. I'm, I'm, I'm as guilty as the players. It's the end of season. I'm ready for the next season now. We've had a fantastic time of it. All are still losing. 4-1. And we lost 1-0. We weren't good enough. Not happy at that. All lost 4-1. If we'd have won. 4-1. It, it was a big turnaround, wasn't it? Stoke went down. On goal difference. Sunderland winning 3-1. And Stoke. Drawing 0-0 with Watford. Oh, Stoke have gone. 
Well, a lot of good players of Stoke. Relegation release clause. Who wants to leave and come to me? Squad planning. End of season review. Can we have the... That is the budget. £165,000 a week and £2.71 million. Well, we, we were advised it was going to be £2.71 million anyway. And we were about 157 So they've not really done a lot. But there's no money in the balance. So I've asked them to upgrade all the facilities and they've done that. So what is going to be the directive for next season? That's the question. Can we have the end of the season review? Club vision and expectations. So end of next season. Attempts to avoid relegation from the Skybet Championship. I'll be honest with you. Absolutely. Easily done. We've just avoided relegation with absolute ease in this most recent season. Tenth we finished mid-table. Let's look at the league table. 67 points. As I mentioned, we had an outside chance of the playoffs. A couple more results earlier in the season, a bit better. And we would have been... Well within a shout. We're not good enough though, so I'm happy enough with where we finished. 30% of transfer revenue is made available. Increased percentage of transfer revenue. Whatever. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. I'll accept that current vision. Um, we, we've done it this season. I can't see us losing that many of our players. We've got most of our contracts are up until next season anyway. I'm going to probably bring in two or three more players. Hopefully in the summer, I'm going to sell a couple of players. We'll get on to that in a minute. Let's just get through to the plans for next season. There we go. You liked that. Just hate these team means. Unless you are winning the leagues and you just say, yeah, we're going to go win the league. Always a lottery, isn't it? Oh, where are we going to go? Go to the Algarve in Portugal. Where's this end of season review? You got rid of it. They've increased the transfer revenue to 50%. Thank you very much. I'm happy at that because I think if I sell a player for like six, seven million pounds, here we go then. About three weeks later, a week. Um, star signing apparently. Signing of the season was C. Intent with the deal to sign Santos to feel the player wages are too high for his place in the squad. 7.75k a week. Look, he's. If we sold him, which I would sell for three million pounds, that's basically tripling your money. Alan Davis. A B minus, yeah, but signing of the season got a C. All right, board. A plus for Antonio Nunes. What's this? Transfer out to Wickham. What? I don't. I don't. What? Daniel Kelly, Queen of the South, got an A. Alex Lowry got a C. Yeah, he only came in January and didn't feature loads. 11 games, 7 off the bench. Keith McGlone also got a C. He was pretty crap. But Keith McGlone was bought for the idea of selling him. And I said. And let's hope his value skyrockets. Well, it bloody has. 6.8 to 8.8 .8 million. He would be out the door faster than you could say his name. The season's results then. A plus. Thank you very much, board. Absolutely. FA Cup. B minus. B minus for getting to the quarterfinal of the FA Cup. It wasn't the hardest run. Come on. C plus. Yeah, went out on pens to Forest. Whatever. Biggest win, 8-4. What, what a great game. Match, remember, the 5-1 against Chesterfield and the goal of the season was Connolly. Great kick from 31 yards. Finances then. Sponsorship up half a million from last season. Broadcast revenue was slightly down. Oh, sorry, 570k last season, so sponsorship's up over a million. About 100k more in corporate hospitality. Competition prize money, nothing last season, apparently. Match day commercial and retail up £135,000. Stewart, Casti, Soji, Cannonier, and Davis, all the biggest shirt sellers. Soji could be on his way out of the club. Keep that to yourselves, gang. And the highest transfer fee paid was for Santos, 1.11 million apparently. And yeah, we paid 1 million for Alan Davis as well. And here we go. This is future start, future. I mean, this dynamic timeline is pathetic, really. 400 games in charge. Humbled a bit of Ravers Rochdale 4 0. Investing in potential again, yeah. Alan Walsh, he's on loan at Inverness, of course. Alan Walsh, we bought him in as well, and he's now worth a bit, oh, big, big range. So, in terms of the squad then, in terms of the squad, Ty Soji might be leaving the club. He's not worth a lot. He's on four and a half grand a week. I'd keep him as a squad option, but he probably doesn't want to stay as a squad option. He's just not featuring in my plans, although he will feature my plans if I do sell someone else. Um, who else are we thinking about selling? Well, I'll be honest with you, anyone is up for the chop. You know, even if someone came in for Leighton Stewart, he came in for like eight, eight and a half million pounds. 
I'd have to think about it. And Watford want him. Watford do want him. I mean, he's the captain. The fans love him. He's consistent. He's a good player for most Skybet Championship sides. But, and he's our top scorer. But money talks. I would let anyone go. We do need... In terms of strengthening, I'm quite happy with how I am in the middle of the park. Um, with McGlone coming in for this defensive midfield role, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I want to give him some game time next season. Hopefully he'll start to improve a bit more and really kick on. Up front, again, I don't think I need to strengthen, but if someone comes up, I will. Same as midfield, really. If someone comes up, I will strengthen. Centre-back. Fitzgerald is all right, but... He's sort of going. To, he's, just, he's not far from hitting his potential. I'd like to cash in on him. Someone comes in for about four or five million. He's gone. Uh, Gareth McCann. That's Jerry McCann. Whereas, oh, Nugent went out on loan. Yeah, sell him. Why is he listed at four hundred? Transfer four hundred k. Oh, I don't know. Oh, he might be going. He might be. His loan deal might become permanent. Uh, Luke Gillum. Oh, he's worth sod all now. <sighs> Oh, get him gone. Gareth Rogers has improved a bit. He's probably going to have to spend another season out on loan, but he's 21 now. He's we're at that point now with Gareth that we got him for free. I think it's time to let him go. I'd let him go for anywhere in that region of money. Half a million, three quarters of a million. Johnny Mooney. I think he's improved quite a lot at Oxford. Don't like where they've been playing him all over the shop. Not bad for his value. Bought him in for half a million, so. I'd like to keep him for another year, at least. Maybe send him out on loan. I'm not too sure about what I'm going to do with Johnny Mooney. Ryan North, get him out of the club. Honestly, please leave. Anywhere in that value, I'd take less than that. I'd take a quarter of a million. Get him gone. Paul Heron. Underwhelmed when I bought him. £77,000 I paid for him. Again, he's worth half a million to a million. It'd be fantastic to get him out of the club. Good for Skybet League 2 sides. I can't see anyone wanting to pay half a million for him, but we'll see. This is, this is it. Like, you see, Anthony O'Heen, where's he as well? Up here. He's listed. Again, another, another player. That we've, how much we pay for him? Only £12,500 from TNS, to be fair. And he did play a bit for us. Um... But as you can see, in League One, he was getting a 6.56. He's not good enough. He's, just, he's got a 6.61 at Notts County in League Two. That's his level. So sometimes these signings I make haven't, haven't paid off. Cole Muscat, 750k to 2 million. That's interesting. Because I did say I might pick up a midfielder if someone comes along. But he's here till 2033 and he's only on 2k a week. I'm... I'm considering keeping him, or do I send him out on loan? Give him some more first team experience. Maybe send him out on loan. But Yoan Roberts might go out on loan. We'll see. And here's Gareth McCann, the man I mentioned earlier. Again, worth quite a bit. He came in for free. He's played a lot in League Two for Wrexham. Is he good enough to play for us? He's a bit slow. He's a bit slow for me, really. I'm undecided on him. Ga well, no, I'm say I'm undecided. He's here till 2033 on £1,700 a week. He is... If, he, if someone come in with a bid of it somewhere in this region, I'd probably let him go in a heartbeat. I'll probably send him out on loan again. With that being said, with the people I want to send out on loan, I'm probably looking for... I need a left back, I need a right back, and I need a centre back. Sammy Robinson this season has not been as good as I wanted him to be. I feel his race is run. He's wanted by Ipswich. He's not worth anywhere near any money, unfortunately. Joe Worm layton has been decent. But even then, I could do with an upgrade on Joe. Sorry, Joe. Plymouth won him. I could do with a... Fullbacks. That's who I need. Fullbacks. Centre-back and a couple of fullbacks. So that's where we'll be looking, but... 
sometimes beggars can't be choosers. I want young players that can maybe flip for a profit, but also on the flip side, if I can just get some players in that are quality, you know, in the mid twenties, might not improve much more. It's the young players that come in in these positions that and then flipping for a big profit. So that's it. That's where we're at in terms of the squad. I think we're doing all right. I think we're ready for next season. A couple of million pounds, nearly three million pounds in the wages. Sorry, three million, two point seven in the transfer budget, and we've got about twenty thousand pounds in terms of next season's wages that we can be spending. That being said, we do have yearly wage rises that are going to eat into that. So the hope this season. Cards on the table. We want to sell a couple of players to to allow us to have a bit of wiggle room with all this. I think that's where we need to be. And you will find out what's happened when we return because the transfer window will be completed. And I dare say the season may have even been started. We will see. Thanks for coming along, gang. Thanks for joining me for the end of this season. Thanks for joining me throughout the series so far. Hope you've enjoyed it. Drop a like on the video. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in season nine.